Hello there, you're tuning in on Yes What. I'm your Yes stylist host, Zoe. And I'm Michelle. Would we'll never pass up an excuse to talk about clothes. So Valentine's Day is just around the corner. Whether you've scheduled romantic dates with your significant other or celebrating Galentines with your BFFs, we've all been through the chaos of choosing an outfit for the occasion. In today's Galentine special, me and Michelle have each prepared an outfit for four different types of date scenarios, which will hopefully bring joy and inspo to you all. Theme park dates are supposed to be fun, but the downside of it is you spending the majority of the day queuing in the cold. My ideal theme park date looks needs to be comfy, warm, but also fun. I'd grab a pair of my trusty boyfriend jeans in a light blue wash and pair it with a brightly coloured and velvety turtleneck. I think theme parks are one of those places that inspire you to step out of your comfort zones a little, which is why I've gone for orange, a colour that I don't usually wear. Sneakers are a must, as I'll be standing and walking all day. I picked out a pair of zebra patterned ones as they're easy to match without being completely swallowed by the bright colours I'm layering on. Socks are the windows to your soles, get it? Excuse my lame pun, but let's keep up the vibrant energy here with some patterned socks to go. I've always wanted to show off my collection of wacky socks, and the theme park just seems like the perfect place for them to shine. So I went with a pastel dreamy landscape print that sums up my mood for the occasion. No date outfit is complete without a statement piece or two. So I've gone with a bomber jacket in a very loud, all over sunset print. My girlfriends need to be able to spot me from the crowd, so just in case we're separated. The pink and orange gradient of the print also complements my orange turtleneck very nicely. Of course, for health and safety reasons, it's a no jewellery kind of day. So my finishing touch will be an orange beanie that echoes the colour schemes of my turtleneck and jacket, while also keeping me warm and toasty. And then now, I'm ready to get on that roller coaster. I'm not a big fan of hanging out at theme parks, generally speaking. Once upon a time, I had a traumatic experience in one which spelled the end of a relationship. But if my best girlfriends asked me to, I'd be there in a heartbeat. I love the idea of dressing down today and forgetting about looking badass or sexy. Of course, it doesn't mean I can't look interesting. The inspiration for this look is, for want of a better phrase, kindergartner in clubland. That sounds so wrong, but I think it sums up the happy and trippy vibes I'm going for here. Basically, it just means I get to pile on ridiculously bright colours while being a little, well actually a lot more twee than usual. I'm anchoring the ensemble in a pair of dark blue dungarees layered over a cropped sky blue hoodie. To be honest, dungarees are something I haven't worn since I was six, but I've also always secretly wanted to look like Bob the Builder, so here goes. This version is in corduroy, which is one of my all-time favourite fabrics, and comes in a streamlined cut that's cute rather than kitty. As for hoodies, they're my idea of comfort wear. I feel good in them the way some people do in an ultra mini. The sky blue version just makes me happy. I don't know about you, but I spend a ridiculous amount of time every morning trying on different socks, hoping that there'll be a pair that finally matches my outfit perfectly. So yes, for me, they're totally make or break. After agonizing debate, I've decided to go for plain yellow ones because they'll probably hit harder against the blue of the ensemble while keeping things clean. I'm pairing them with chunky white sneakers since I'll probably be running around a lot today. Plus, they'll help to keep those six-year-old tomboy vibes going strong. You might wonder why I bother with earrings, but I feel really naked without them and my trusty golden huggies seem kind of underwhelming for the occasion. This glittery, glammed up and super kishy pair is exactly what I need. Consisting of rest and rain clouds in blue and white, it's obviously, in my mind at least, inspired by Kitty Craft's classes. If the class in question is working on disco balls rather than family portraits in crayon, that is. Completing the look will be the simple canvas tote and blaze in the 2001 lettering. I love the vague time travel vibes this gifts off. More importantly, it's roomy enough to fit everything I'd be bringing along for the day, including candy, water bottle, and let's not forget, pick-me-ups for all my besties. If I'm going to a romantic dinner near Valentine's Day, that must mean me and my date really hit it off intellectually. Great ambience of a soft jazz soundtrack is key to a romantic dinner in my opinion, but since I talk a lot, it also needs to be a fairly quiet space so that I won't need to shout across the table midway through appetizers. I dress to impress myself first, so my outfit needs to look and feel right. Naturally, I want my date to focus on me, my face to be exact. So to start, I'm going with big wire work earrings in the shape of a girl's side profile. 
for modern, artsy mood. These earrings are such a statement. I'm sure my date won't stop looking at them. Um, I mean, my face all night. Slinky high heels aren't my thing, so I'm sure I'd be more comfortable prancing around in a pair of chunky ankle boots that give off more dress down glam. Instead of fail safe black, I went with a caramel coloured ones to go with the warm tones of my gold earrings. I also found this patent pleather beret in a matching colour to add to the look. As for the body, I wanted dressy, but not too dressy. A blazer dress is perfect. It's flirty, sexy, smart, and not overly feminine. It's like my version of a power suit for a date. Perhaps I'm feeling a little girly that day. In that case, I'll probably go for something like a wasabi green belted blazer dress. It's a lighter, slightly more harmless looking colour that radiates gentle woman energy. Instead of a patent leather bag to match the shoes and hat, a fluffy beige coloured handbag is what I'll be going for to soften the look just a little. And let's say if I'm feeling more alpha on the day, I'll probably pick out a blazer dress in a darker colour for a more mature view. Like this olive green one with a slightly rouged waist. It still exudes that power suit energy, but with a more femme silhouette. So for just the right amount of sex appeal. I'll also swap out the fluffy handbag for smooth leathery clutch in the asymmetrical cut, just to give the look a little more contemporary twist. I'm exactly five dates into A, for want of a better word. Things are going well. Well, they're certainly heating up. Perhaps we could mean more to each other than someone I met on an app could maybe date and eventually build a life with. I'm being taken to a fancy restaurant. Well, fancy enough anyway. The aim is to look like I've made quite a bit of effort, but not too much. Which is why I'm mixing velvet with denim and serious bling with chunky white sneakers. The aesthetic I'm going for? Burlesque energy is uptown vibes, give or take a few casual touches. Velvet is one of my favourite fabrics next to corduroy. For this outfit, I picked a blue velvet cami that's designed to show off a glimpse of décolletage, picking it less for straightforward sex appeal than for sensual vibes and a little mystery. The form-fitting but not overly skin-tight fit is relatively kind to figures. We should be useful considering I never skip dessert. For grungy contrast, I'm pairing this with a denim skirt, but I've chosen one in a meaty pencil cut that's fine dining appropriate. I've always felt most attractive in velvet and most comfortable in denim, so what could be better for a date outfit? Of course, there needs to be something extra, and this fluffy jacket is the answer. Oversized but cinched in by pin tucks at the waist, it hits the sweet spot between chill and dramatic. The ivory colour contrasts nicely against the deep blue of the top and skirt to create an appropriately wintry feel, which hopefully adds to the mysterious aura. I also love how the oversized labels and drop shoulders add a surreal touch to something that's otherwise quite preppy. A candlelit dinner calls for strategic accessorizing, which is why I'm adding sparkly silver earrings to the mix. For a bit of edge, I've chosen an asymmetrical pair that will hopefully be a talking point should there ever be dead air. Which there will be, I'm sure. With a star-shaped stud on one side and dangly cascade of rhinestones on the, on the other, it's elegant but still edgy, which is, let's face it, how most of us wish to appear on a date. This outfit does lean very dressy by my standards, so I'm toning things down with a pair of familiar white sneakers that I'm comfortable with. This no frills pair keeps the vibe casual rather than all-out preppy. Finally, I'll grab this shoulder back in black croc grain before I'd head out to this hypothetical date. It's sleek, it's structured and it's vintagey. If anything, it's the perfect thing to clutch onto should things go unexpectedly wrong in the course of the evening. Meeting the parents for the first time is a very delicate matter. You ought to make a good impression, but you also shouldn't be afraid to let your personality shine. Of course, the premise of the meeting matters, and that depends on the type of place and occasion. Whether they take dress codes seriously or not, you don't want to look too overdressed or underdressed. So imagine you're going to a fairly casual smart Saturday dinner at the parents' home, or maybe lunch at their favourite dim sum place. And thus looking prim and proper is your usual look. I really don't buy into the idea of presenting yourself as a good girl. I'm not saying you should go crazy and wear something inappropriate either, but if the occasion requires some level of sophistication, you can go with the brief without sacrificing your personality. My approach here is to strike a balance between sophistication and self-expression. I'm not really a dress person, so trousers are a better fit for me. 
I've gone for a pink pair to communicate the idea of a bubbly personality and a wide legged cut that would work for both smart and casual situations. To sweeten the look without going all out on candy colours, I've opted for butter yellow knitted jumper to match the pink trousers. It's cropped, though just the right length so that it's flattering and parent safe. For the outdoors, I've picked up a houndstooth jacket in a cropped fit bomber silhouette. I love classic pieces with an unconventional twist, which is also telling of my personal values. Continuing the theme, I've gone with a bowling baguette handbag for a fun retro touch. It's in a buttery yellow that matches my yellow jumper too. My trick to a parent's meet greet is to wear shoes that are fairly comfortable, but not that comfortable. It's better to remain self-aware without looking uneasy. So goodbye to flats and hello to trusty ankle boots. I'm going with a pair that is slightly embellished with gold details, with heels that aren't too high or too low. Just the perfect height for me to look polished and confident. Concluding the look, I'm smuggling a little glam to a seemingly preppy headband for finishing touch. It's thick and velvety, but lightly decorated with dainty faux pearls. It's hard to help feeling a little antsy before meeting the parents for the first time. Technically, it means you've arrived as a couple and that there's no turning back, at least for a while yet. There's also the chance that you'll completely piss them off in some small, imperceptible way and will therefore be in their bad box forever. It's like trying to impress your date all over again, except this time is way harder. I'm going to try though with the right clothes, which means nothing too dark and nothing too extra. We're probably meeting for lunch somewhere smart casual, so I'll stick to a jazzed up sweater and pants combo. Preppy vibes mixed with a hint of grandma core, and then a palette that's bright, but not too bright. This vintage style crew neck sweater, which comes in navy blue with a scattering of flowers in primary colors, is exactly what I'm looking for. It basically says, I can talk about serious growing up stuff, but I also have a fun and playful side. I'm polite, but I'm not exactly a pleaser. Ditto these corduroy wide leg pants, which come in a tailored cut, but in an emerald green that's hard to miss. While I have a secret conviction that parents probably prefer to see me in a floral dress of some sort, I do feel more comfy in, in pants, especially corduroy ones. Since I'd rather not put up a facade only to shop them somewhere down the line, I might as well offer a glimpse of my real personality right here, right now. I love a good pair of Mary Janes, and these velvet versions in forest green are giving me serious fairy tale vibes. If anything, they prove that my inner girly girl does exist. I also love that they're flats, because who needs a drama of heels on such an occasion? Most of all though, I'm patting myself on the back for smuggling some decadence into this date, because there is just something slightly sultry and dangerous about green velvet. For accessories, I'm playing it safe by sticking to something sleek yet neutral. Golden, disc-like study arrangement with a battered matte finish. It's the least frivolous accessory I can think of that still manages to say, I have a personality. In fact, I have hidden depths. Continuing things in a low-key direction is this front flap crop ring shoulder bag with just a hint of librarian chic. The creamy brown fits in with the vintage woodland inspired palette, while the shape is growing up without being too formal or too basic. As for that bubblegum pink tote, I'm forever trying to break into my wardrobe. I guess I can again wait for another day. Ending a relationship or saying no to someone comes with courage, which is why my most ideal post-breakup outfit is all about concealing emotions with a cool exterior. It needs to be fierce and badass. I'm not the type to stay friends after, so we gotta get that message across satorily. I'd be wearing this look to the actual breakup before sashaying away to meet my girlfriends to cry and sing our hearts out. And yes, my post-breakup hang is going to be a late night karaoke sesh. Nothing screams fierce and cool like an all black look. So I'd be donning all the cold hard leather and silver jewelry I can get my hands onto. Starting with a pair of killer high heeled long black pleather boots, not something I'd usually wear or casually wear but that's precisely the point I'm trying to make. The mood I'm going for here is part witchy, part matrix, which I will unapologetically channel via a pleather, slip back midi skirt and a collarless jacket cinched in at the waist with a matching waist tie. As for jewelry, I find myself gravitating towards garish silverware for distraction, which I'll need plenty of at this point. I'll throw on these rhinestone fringe earrings for a touch of bling, and in contrast, a chunky Cuban chain bracelet and snake engraving ring for hard-edged glamour. 
With an all-black outfit like this, I'm going to give my black handbags a day off today. But I'll follow the dress code here with a two-tone monochrome shoulder bag. It's a little retro, but with a modern shape. Perfect for popping a pair of emotion concealing sunglasses, a dark lippy, and maybe a few packets of tissue, just in case. Who said I'm a romantic person? Okay, but admittedly, when breakups come, they really do hit hard. Cue the tears, the electro pop bangers, and the months spent hiding from everyone while stalking my ex on social media. Inevitably, the girls will call to see whether or not for going out, just for casual hang, to celebrate my freedom. How could I refuse, if only for the sake of my mental health? I've sworn I'd do things differently this time, so instead of letting it go and turning into a frump, I've decided to come back the blues by dressing up. On my mental mood board are plushies, pick and mix candies and retro cartoons, childhood staples that'll cushion my heartbreak. The goal is to get as far as possible from edgy and mysterious without sacrificing sex appeal, which is why I'm introducing ice cream sundae colors, soft fabrics and hip hop energy into my outfit. Things I normally hesitate to put together in an outfit. Everything begins with this candy pink zip up top and an off shoulder design which comes in a soft, fluffy, comforting material. It's great for showing off some skin without being outrageously sexy. I also think I'd break the sartorial rule of a lifetime by pairing it with joggers, turquoise ones to be precise. As a color, turquoise manages to be mood boosting and calming at the same time, which is great because honestly, I'm way too tired for edgy, sexy clothing I have to live up to. I need to be in a certain headspace for statement shoes, or even shoes which are not sneakers. And today is definitely not one of those days. I cannot add blisters to my list of walls, so I'm sticking to chunky platform sneakers with pops of pale pink. Echoing its clean and pristine vibes is this compact shoulder bag and a soft quilted fabric, bringing to mind vanilla ice cream and duvet covers. We come to the only luxe element in the outfit, ornate jumble size faux pearl studs with touches of gold. It's a little 80s, a little grandma's jewelry box and just the right side of tacky the perfect balance to counter the ultra casual feel of the outfit. Basically it screams, I'm back and ready to party, even if the rest of my outfit sets, I'm swearing off dating for life. Of course, I'd be lying if I said I'm over the breakup. So I guess while I'd be comfort dressing my way back to sanity, I wouldn't be able to resist just a slick of black nail polish to signal my inner rage. So a while back, we posted on our IG stories a little game of this or that, but for date outfits. And the results are back in. So for a first date in the park, it seems like 39% of you guys prefer to keep it effortless, while 61% of you guys prefer to dress up. What about you, Michelle? What are your personal thoughts on like a first date in a park? I'm actually really surprised that people, like more people wanted to like dress up because we're meeting in a park. So I feel it's like- It's kind of casual. Yeah, how right. do you want to dress up? I mean, do you want to wear a dress and heels to a park? <laughs> oh, or... so <laughs> I mean, So um, for me, I'm definitely keeping it effortless, but it seems mm. I'm in the minority here. Actually, I agree with you. I think if I think back to a first date in a park that I've ever had, I definitely wore flats. Yeah. And I definitely wore, but I think it's something like th- that's still kind of girly. So yeah. I wore like, you know, the, a dress, but we'll, I'll layer it on with like a jumper just so that there's a better mix. I think I wore something like a corduroy jacket. That's and, very you. Yeah, <laughs> that is very me. <laughs> and something very me as well, like a turtleneck underneath. And like, I think I wore flats, but I mean, I don't think it pays to like kind of put in, to, you want to put in the right amount of effort mm. for a first date. So I think dressing up for me is really not a thing yeah not too dress yeah. up just a yeah. little bit of effort not too yeah. much maybe not even earrings <laughs> <laughs> that's really keeping it effortless yeah <laughs> um but it seems that more of you well most of you wanted to dress up for the candlelit dinner 60 percent of you wanted to offer classical elegance whereas only 40 percent of you wanted to take the road less traveled by which means going quirky or alternative or whatever mm. that means but i think that also depends on the type of restaurant you're going yeah. for the candle it could just be dining at home with some candles on again that, oh, that means okay. you can wear pjs <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's really bad but i feel like most people do get the idea that it's a candle lit dinner then you there's some sort of dr- it's like a dressed up it's an occasion for you to dress up a bit and i think people want to dress up sometimes like it's a good excuse for you to abandon the pjs and just put on whatever makes you feel good be it a dress or 
jumpsuit or whatever. <laughs> I am surprised that at least forty percent of people actually don't want to go for the classic yeah. sort of elegance look. They can... I think that kind of it has like preppy connotations, mm. and people might not want that, and so people just want to stick to their own personalities and just go for something That's true more too. alternative. And then when it comes to meeting their parents, sixty-one percent of you guys prefer to be preppy and pretty, and it makes them happy apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why, <laughs> but I love that. A pretty and preppy makes me happy. Okay, and then thirty nine percent of you guys prefer to keep things a little bit quirky. Okay, now this is a very controversial sort of topic because meeting the parents traditionally do give people the idea to look kind of more like demure, like a good girl, like a good girl,、mm. which I already mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think most people. Do want to look like good girls? Apparently, yeah. I'm kind of surprised though that it's such an overwhelming majority.、Yeah. What are your personal experiences of this? Like, have you ever? Well, my experiences are quite minimal, but they do exist. <laughs> <laughs> And I think I actually prefer to keep things a little bit quirky, but just a little bit. I mean,、mm. just to show off some sense of personality.、Mm-hmm. But I mean. Going preppy is not really something I'm very into, but I mean, you just don't want to wear anything inappropriate, which you also mentioned early、totally. on. Yeah, but I mean, within that kind of zone, you can still bring in some of your own personality. I feel.、Mm, I do agree. Okay, for the post breakup girls' night out, which <laughs> <laughs> we're putting this last because that's that's kind of how a relationship runs. It? It,、yeah. If it goes wrong, it goes if wrong. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong.、I'm、not gonna、yeah. put a wedding poll here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and fifty five percent of you wanted to dig out everything black and low cut, whereas forty five percent of you thinks it's time to wear that bodysuit in bright pink. Which one are you actually? I'm kind of on the fence. <laughs> <laughs>、yeah. What about mix? <laughs>、mm. Yeah, they'll work actually. But I mean, it depends on the mood because after the breakup, it, it depends. Was it a really bad breakup, or was it just like you don't really care anymore? Yeah, it's like yay, <laughs> I'm <laughs> finally rid. Then,、oh. then that's the pink bodysuit. But I feel like black could have that connotation as well. It's just like I just don't give a. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. What is your choice, though? Apart from the ones that we've just mentioned, what have you worn? I have to say that I usually kind of lean towards going black, though. I mean, if you're feeling moody, you kind of want to wear something to match that. I feel that's true. Yeah, and you also want to look kind of like better than you feel、mm. after a breakup. So maybe you'll reach for something a little sexier. That's why low cut. <laughs> yeah, that's why low cut. Low cut, very important. <laughs> What about you? Me, I haven't. Hmm. Let me think. It doesn't have to be bright pink. I mean, it could be a more you kind of color, like something bright. A post breakup girl's night out. I think I'll definitely go out like it, with more bling because、mm. it's something that I don't、sure. usually、yeah. wear. So I'm just gonna go like the opposite route. Yeah. Like say, yeah, hey, yeah, I'm yeah. just gonna, I'm a new person, <laughs> 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 not new at all. <laughs> But I'll just, I'll definitely be more experimental in terms of like wearing something that I'd, I'd be, I'll be a bit more daring to yeah. wear something. Yeah. I think I might even wear a pair of heels, something like that. Oh my、I、god. I mean, but I'll be in pain on that. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> But maybe like something less. Usual, which I, I think like like going out of your comfort zone.、Mm, yeah, so I think that's quite important. It's like something just to liberate you from to liberate you <laughs> because you have you've been liberated from from a bad, terrible bad relationship. relationship. <laughs> We've also posted on our IG stories to ask、uh, you guys what's the most inappropriate thing you've ever worn to a date. So before I read the results, do you have anything to share, Michelle? <laughs> <laughs> what? No. <laughs> I think my most inappropriate outfit for a date is probably going the overdress route.、Mm. Like I once showed up in something quite dressy, and I think an animal print. Whoa! What was the occasion、yeah. though? What type of what, what kind of date was it? It was um,、meet、it was a one, it was a lunch. <laughs> it wasn't a meet the parents date. It was just kind of a like meeting someone for the first few times date.、Uh, yeah, but I feel like it was just a bit too. Was、much. the animal print scaring them away? <laughs> I feel like it did scare them away a little bit. It could be quite intimidating. I never heard from that person again <laughs>、oh、after that date. So, yeah, yeah. I feel like animal prints is something you wear with your friends. To, I know, I know, I know. To just make a statement. I know. I mean, it's the wrong kind of statement, apparently. What have I worn that's really inappropriate? I think I'm really weird. I think maybe I'm just weird. I hate accidentally matching with the guy I'm seeing. I hate it. I feel like why are you copying me? <laughs> I have a sense to feel unique, you know. So, copying as in like matching. As yeah, in... matching like 
unintentionally. Mm-hmm. Like there like was a colors t- or styles. Uh, like so, for example, like maybe it's like a very obvious piece in your look. So like a jacket. Mm. You guys are wearing a same kind of jacket, uh. same color, and I'm just like, I don't like it. I'm, I don't want to match with you. Like as much as I love you, I don't want to match with you. Mm. <laughs> I don't like few kind of you know people wear those couples outfits. Oh, I hate it so much. <laughs> I don't understand it. Sometimes you see people wearing the same like graphic hoodie or something. And they're like, you're not twins. I know. You're a couple. <laughs> <laughs> this is very controversial, but yeah. But I think it happens from, it stems from my experience where I was like a teenager and I accidentally wore the same sort of parka jacket with my boyfriend. Mm. Boyfriend Den, same now, whatever. Okay. I don't know why I need to mention that. Anyway, I cut that <laughs> out. <laughs> but then like all our classmates were just like, oh, you guys are matching. And I'm like, I hate people saying that. I don't want to match with you. And then we just spent the whole day with that. Like, I just took off my jacket. I was like, I'm not wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it didn't Good take it personally. You. Yeah. But it seems like our responses for this uh, for the sticker is a bit mixed. So, it's very diverse. Yeah, we've got some <laughs> really responses. strange ones. Someone just said hope. Someone says bar. love. You're gonna wear love <laughs> for a day. What does it mean to wear love? It's quite inappropriate, <laughs> clearly. Home clothes and workout clothes. But I feel like, what kind of date is it if you're going out in workout clothes? Are you like? It could be like a snazzy, like a athleisure, like a coffee date, and then yeah. you just came from the gym. Yeah, yeah, that that works. I think. I don't think home clothes is actually that bad. I mean. Um, I don't know. Are you going out in home clothes, or I don't, are you FaceTiming in home? Clothes? What does home like? What do home? Because everyone wears different <sighs> kinds of clothes. I mean, what do you wear at home? I know, like, what what, what it constitutes to home clothing? I don't know. Something I mean, like loungewear. Loungewear, maybe. Athleisure. Yeah, athleisure. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Well, there's someone who says lame shirt and ripped jeans. That sounds very. 2010. It just sounds kind of generic, kind of. What, what does lame shirt mean? Lame boy, what does lame shirt mean? Like a flannel shirt? It could be cool. Maybe she felt it was lame at that point. Because the lame is very subjective. Or so. maybe looking back, she find that outfit lame. But mm. at, the, at the time then, she thought, oh, it's not It's thought it was fine, like it looks effortless. And yeah. then it didn't work out and she's like, oh, that was a lame that outfit. Was a lame I blame it. <laughs> Someone's very confident and say, I've had no issues. Wow. <laughs> Thanks for telling us. <laughs> and someone's very honest and says, I have never date. <laughs> we appreciate your honesty. It's okay, you don't need to date pro- romantically to wear a hot outfit. You can date your friends. <laughs> oh, someone says being in a long distance relationship and having a FaceTime date in PJs and pig slippers. Pig slippers? I think they're kind of cute though. It's quite cute. Yeah. But it's a long distance relationship, so I guess it's more like you're really kind of steady. Yeah. And they should and be And FaceTime, used- it's, it's fine, right? I mean, it's, you're, it's not like your FaceTime is for the first. I guess it sounds inappropriate on pa- on text because uh, in pa- in paper, what am I saying? In writing, because you know, if you say it's a date and you're just mm. wearing your pajamas and your pig slippers, yeah. it sounds a bit outrageous. But <laughs> considering the situations now, now I yeah, think it's perfectly I know normal. it's perfectly fine. And then that's all. <laughs> that's and all. Then that's all. That's yeah. all the responses we've had today. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Michelle. Thank you, Zoe. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching till the end. Let us know if you liked our content by liking and commenting on the video. Subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications to not miss any future uploads.